Campaign 2018 Special. The Massachusetts Senate debate starts right now. Good evening and welcome to the WBZ Senate debate here on TV 38. I'm John Keller, political analyst for WBZ, welcoming our viewers online at cbsboston.com, our listeners on WBZ News Radio 1030, and viewers across the country on C SPAN. Let's welcome the candidates in tonight's debate. In alphabetical order, they are the Republican challenger. Jeff Deal, state representative from Whitman since 2010. And the Democratic incumbent, Elizabeth Warren, elected to the Senate in 2012. Welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you, John. Now, before we begin, a word about our format. Each candidate will have up to a minute to respond to questions from us and WBZ viewers. They'll take turns going first. After their time is up, we'll have open periods of rebuttal and discussion during which they're free to question one another directly. These periods are governed by our three golden rules. No filibustering, no talking over one another, and total obedience to your moderator. Right, candidates? Right. Good. Excellent. That cycle will repeat throughout the hour. So with that said, let's begin our debate. And uh, you'll take the first question first. Representative Deal, at times during this race, both of you have had your character questioned. Mr. Deal, you were criticized during your primary as an opportunist because you were a registered Democrat until 2009. Ms. Warren, the other day on Fox News, Mr. Deal said, quote, honesty with Elizabeth Warren seems to be a foreign word, end quote. So let's get this out right now. Is your opponent's character an issue in this race? One minute, sir. Well, first of all, I think the fact is, um, you know, having been a former Democrat is an asset in this race. So anybody who was attacking me in that, not an issue. With Senator Warren, I think one of the big uh, things that's been out there, she released a video earlier this week to try to clarify an ancestry uh, thing. I don't care, Senator Warren, about uh, what your Native American heritage is or isn't. I think it's about integrity. And one of the issues I think that I found with that was that you had listed yourself in a national directory as Native American. Whether you felt you did or did not benefit from that, uh, it seems that uh, maybe that was inappropriate to list yourself and taking a, a minority higher position away from somebody else. And so to me, being consistent there. And the other thing, too, with consistency uh, and integrity is making sure that um, when you're asking other people to pay more in taxes, we come to find out that you have taken substantial deductions on your own taxes. And in, in case this case, um, accidentally, you know, incorrectly filing $50,000 worth of deductions for clothing. So, you know, you want other people to pay more money. You want to pay less on taxes. I'm actually with you on that. Um, but I think integrity is a big part of this. Okay, thank you. Same question, Ms. Warren. Well, I'm going to start by saying how grateful I am to be here. You know, it was six years ago that I stood right here and asked the people of Massachusetts to take a chance on someone who'd never run for public office before. And I promised every day I would fight to level the playing field for working families. My opponent, Mr. Deal, has said that if he's elected, he will have Donald Trump's back 100% of the time. Not me. I'll be here for the people of Massachusetts. Now, the whole notion of confidence in government has really gone to a low point. And so for me, what I've done is I've just tried to put it all out there. I've put out 10 years of taxes. I've put out my hiring records, all the papers that anybody could find. I've put out um, uh, uh, my family story. Shoot, I even took a DNA test. It's there. I am an open book. And I've also tried to make clear throughout this, I am not a citizen of any tribal nation. Uh, only tribes determine tribal citizenship. It's not done by DNA. Uh, the Boston Globe has done uh, an extensive analysis and come up with the fact that nothing in my background ever made any difference in my hiring. All right. Mr. Deal knows this, and, and the reason he raises it is because he's just trying to do Donald Trump's bidding here. Rebuttal. You know, I know you're going to hear a lot about uh, Donald Trump in this debate because Senator Warren clearly wants to run against him in the 2020 elections. Uh, she's made a substantial effort, uh, first of all, spending quite a bit out of state, time out of state, going to uh, places like Ohio, uh, stumping for the governor's candidate there, going to California numerous times. I know you've gone to New York on talk shows to sell the books that you've written. Uh, you've been to Georgia, I think, just last week. Uh, you were in Pennsylvania and Oklahoma uh, the two weekends ago when I was up in Lawrence at the... Uh, 
uh, it, looking at the uh, National Gas Line explosions and working with the National Guard to get hot plates out. You know, you certainly want to make this a, a national race for yourself against Donald Trump. This is about Massachusetts. This is about working for the people here. And when I uh, vote down in Washington, D.C., I am not going to be voting 100 percent of the time, as you erroneously claim with the president. I was against him on uh, tax reform uh, elements like the uh, sta state and local tax deductions and uh, certainly against him planning to index the gas tax to go up for a federal so, funding. Response. You know, go ahead. I, just, I just kind of wondered if he would back off that quote uh, because I actually have it here. Mr. Deal said at a Republican event at Maxwell Simmerman's uh, at a private event in Worcester on April 27, 2018, speaking only to a room full of Republicans, quote, who here voted for Donald Trump, by the way? Well, as you can see, he can't do it alone down in Washington. We need someone that's going to have his back. And I promise you, I will have his back 100 percent. Absolutely. It doesn't mean you have to vote exactly how he oh, tells you to yeah. vote. I think having his back means voting for him. And let's talk about, if we're going to talk about character, what it means to have Donald Trump's back. You know, I actually made a list about this, about what that means. It means, of course, being the vote to roll back health care for tens of millions of Americans. It means a trillion and a half dollar tax giveaway. And paid for, the Republicans say, by cutting Social Security and Medicare. It means standing by Donald Trump when he calls white supremacists in Charlottesville fine people. And when Donald Trump blamed both sides in Charlottesville, gosh, that's exactly the same line that Jeff Deal picked up. Okay, let him respond, please. So the tax reform, Social Security, two things you think the Republicans want to take away. Actually, what's happening right now is remarkable. We are seeing a tax reform bill that's giving Massachusetts unbelievable unemployment. We're at 3.5% right now. 3.5%. That's leading the country, which is about 3.7, 3.8%. Not since I was born have we had unemployment at this level. Now, you vowed to undo this, repeal the tax reform bill. You called it crumbs. Uh, by the way, the best way to rebuild Social Security and the funds is the payroll taxes that put the money back into it. And the payroll taxes come from the increased jobs that have happened here in Massachusetts and around the country, the increased wages. I believe there was a report that came out about 3%, almost 3% increase in wages. We are seeing, because of the tax reform, something that you, again, joined in with Nancy Pelosi and calling crumbs is actually helping the people so look, of Massachusetts. I think there's a fundamental question here, and that is, who does government work for? Um, the answer in the tax cut is pretty obvious. It works for billionaires and giant corporations who got a trillion and a half dollars in tax cuts. The Republicans have now said, oh, wait, that means the debt is going up. And what have they put on the table to cut to deal with the debt, who's going to pay for it? They said it's going to be Social Security and Medicare. Mr. Deal wants to go to be that deciding vote to cut Social Security and Medicare. Why? To preserve tax cuts for billionaires and giant corporations. You talk about the effect here in Massachusetts. I'm glad to talk about it. One company, Exxon, one company got more in this tax scam than 95 percent of the people who live right here in Massachusetts. Look, government right now with a Republican control is working great for billionaires, for giant corporations. It's just not working for the rest of America. So Equal time. You want to move that along. Sure. So Mitch McConnell is the one that talked about Social Security and Medicare. I, I am not a Mitch McConnell Republican. I am a Massachusetts Republican that has worked with Democrats and Republicans. I, to, I, I'm, I'm sorry. So when was it exactly that you called out Mitch McConnell on this and said you were opposed to a trillion and a half dollars in tax cuts for billionaires? I think I'm doing it right now. I think I'm doing it oh, right now, Senator. until tonight to I, do it? He just made the and announcement. And you said, no, Mitch McConnell is the one who has done this. And Mitch McConnell, uh, the Republicans have said over and over, the Republicans have said they want to pay for it now by cutting Social Security. And I've forgotten when in the past did you call them out for that and say, absolutely not? We can't let, cut Social let Security. Respond. I don't want to cut Social Security. In fact, we're going to make sure we restore it, like I said, by making sure that the economy continues at the pace it's at. We're, we have right now GDP at 4.1% going towards 5%. We have a stock market that's now making sure that our retirements, our 401ks, are shored up uh, because the economy is doing so well. We're see May I please finish? I, I, you've already interrupted me once. Uh, you know, you talk about the fact that, uh, you know, Massachusetts people aren't benefiting from the tax cut. 80% of Massachusetts residents are getting a tax cut, lower taxes federally 
because of that tax reform. And that's why we're seeing now businesses reinvesting in them. My wife and I, we own a small business. We started it 16 years ago. We put our life savings into it. We didn't take a paycheck until we had paid back our personal loan to our family. And we are now finally, like many other businesses, getting a chance to get ahead because the tax reform has taken the largest corporate tax rate in the world off of, off of our backs and is allowing us to do a better job. And more companies are doing that, investing in people. Response. So, you know, this is the basic Republican scam, and that is cut taxes for those at the top and then make everyone else pay for it. That's what the Republicans want to do right now. And that's the fundamental question about who this economy works for. This economy is working better and better and better for a thinner and thinner and thinner slice at the top. I was just out on the picket lines with uh, Local 26. You know what they're pitching for? that one job should be enough to support people because that is the lived economy also right here in Massachusetts. We need an economy that works for all of us. You know, I go talk to Ruthie over at Patty's Bar and she talks to me about taxes. You know what she says? She never gets to take those deductions for offshore drilling and for, for uh, having money in the Cayman Islands and for doing some kind of reverse swap in Ireland. She's a small business person, and she said the problem is right now, under the Republican tax bill, she pays full freight, while the Exxons of the world, the giant corporations okay. of the world, they pay only a tiny freight. Your turn. You know, on the previous administration, we saw a tax policy that basically drove capital out of our country, trillions of dollars offshored, and now we're finally seeing companies bring that money back into the United States back into the economy, that's what's giving us a better chance to have a future for everybody, people being able to work less jobs, more pay in their households. And, uh, you know, I think, again, with... Uh, yes? Well, then let's talk about who that tax cut really worked for. Because all those tax cuts to those giant corporations, do you know what's actually happened to median wages? They haven't gone up. In fact, adjusted for inflation, Wages in many of our industries are actually down slightly. There's no doubt, if you are a huge investor, man, if you're a CEO, those tax cuts really work for you. All right, let, let's you go know, back and forth. It's interesting. Just, Senator, Warren, interesting Senator Warren issue. wants to ignore the fact that 90% of businesses in the United States have 20 employees or less. She wants us to think that all corporations are these evil empires that are just trying to suck the money Wait out of the economy. 90% of and businesses you know what she's, did not get a, tr a billion when you have 90 percent of businesses Exxon under 20 people okay. I, no one can hear you when you both talk at once go ahead uh, representative then you can reply. when you have companies with 20 employees or less you have business owners that uh, have make sure that they pay their employees before they yeah. pay themselves I worked for a sign company out of New Bedford it was fourth generation running that company right now they made sure that they took less than some of their employees if the economy wasn't good. So in bad years, they make less. In good years, maybe they make a little more. But generally, they're the ones putting food on the table for their employees by making sure they're paid first. That's 90% of our businesses out there. And that's the problem. This tax cut wasn't about 90% of our businesses. It was about the giant businesses. It was about the billionaires. Those are the ones who've walked off with the big money. And they have left everyone else behind. I Employees wages have not gone up because of this tax cut. In fact, what's happened because of this tax cut is that now there's just less money for the kinds of things we need. Republicans are coming after Social Security. There's no money to invest in education. I think we're no living in two different worlds. I think that you, infrastructure. They're you haven't seen in the European Union renegotiate to trade deals that are benefiting us. Canada and Look, Mexico renegotiating trade deals. China do is you, now coming. We are getting to the point where the United States is actually economically so prosperous right now that we are back in control of our future. You're going to talk about China and infrastructure and pound on how well the United States is doing here? China is now investing somewhere in the neighborhood of 9% of its GDP in infrastructure. They've set that money aside and they are building a future for their small businesses and their because businesses. Because they've been taking advantage of the United States for years and on the trade deals. We are finally standing up for ourselves. investing less than 3% of its GDP in infrastructure. That hasn't gone up because of this tax arrangement. What's happened with this tax arrangement? is that there's been under this scam more than a trillion dollars or there's we're on target 
for more than a trillion dollars in just stock buybacks on Wall Street. It's like a sugar high. Securing people's companies. 401ks for the future yeah, and retirement. I want billionaires, it, but not the rest of America. I want to move on. If you have more on this, you can certainly return to the topic later. Why don't we do that so we can get some other topics in? And you'll go first here, Senator Warren. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's shift to foreign policy for a Good. moment here. Earlier this evening, Saudi Arabia admitted journalist Jamal Khashoggi died at the hands of their own officials inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul earlier this month, a killing that has many in Congress calling for severe sanctions, while the White House to date has struck a less combative tone. President Trump called the Saudis, quote, a good ally. Now, this issue has local economic repercussions, too. Some of our most important businesses and institutions benefit from Saudi money. What response, based on what you now know, would you advocate in the Senate? One minute, Senator Warren. I want to start with the fact that this was not just some ordinary killing. This was killing someone in the press who asked questions that a dictatorship doesn't like. And I think that's a significant part of this. This was an attack on democracy. It was an attack on democracy all around the world. And the response should come not just from the United States, but should come all around the world. Otherwise, we empower dictators to kill journalists who ask hard questions. The second one is, why does everyone ask right now why Donald Trump is not stepping up here? Why isn't he more aggressive with Saudi Arabia? Is it possible that Donald Trump's hotels are at risk, his financial dealings, his family's financial dealings? Uh, if we could see his taxes, does he owe money to the Saudis? Nobody knows because Donald Trump has kept all that secret. This is the most corrupt administration in living history. And we are now watching the implications of that. Do we need a strong response on Saudi Arabia? Absolutely. And Donald Trump is showing he's not capable. Equal of time, that. Mr. Deal. Ironic to get a question about uh, honesty with taxes, but I'll, I'll pass on that and talk specifically about Saudi Arabia. Yeah, we've got to protect freedom of the press around the world. And I think that with Saudi Arabia, clearly uh, a strong ally in the past and with the Middle East in, in the situation it's in right now, we need to continue to have a relationship. And yes, there are businesses in Massachusetts, uh, General Dynamics, uh, Raytheon, obviously uh, very important jobs to keep here in the United States in Massachusetts. And with those companies uh, having contracts, I think it's important, especially the fact that Saudi Arabia uh, is also working to try to keep terrorism in check in their own backyard. And that is... Uh, you know, dealing with some of the businesses that we, we have with them. The, um, the fact of the matter is, though, that the Middle East uh, is still unsafe, and it's good to have in the long haul an ally like Saudi Arabia. Israel is obviously an important partner. I'm glad that we have continued to strengthen our relationship, have moved the um, capital to Jerusalem, and I think that we need to make sure that uh, our allies over there are supported by us, but at the same time hold them accountable when atrocities like this happen. Thank you. Rebuttal. So I think we just heard what it means to have Donald Trump's back 100% of the time. He gives a limp response when, a, uh, when someone from the press has been brutally murdered, and Jeff Deal's there to help him out. But, you know, I just want to respond for a second to the cheap shot on taxes. I want to be clear. I think that one way we build trust in government is transparency. And among the things I've done is I've put 10 years of my tax returns out there. They're on the Internet. Anybody can look through them. And, yeah, I made a mistake. didn't make any difference in how much money I owed. But there is a mistake in my taxes, and there may be two or three more over 10 years. But Jeff Deal has put exactly the same number of tax returns out in public as Donald Trump has. Zero. You know, you want to talk about transparency, you want to talk about honesty, where's 10 years of your tax? Response? Well, I'm not running for president, which is usually what the, when people call for taxes. I've actually filed every required document for the Senate run, and for eight years I've made my finances available to everybody. I'm not a millionaire like you, Senator Warren. I am just a guy from Whitman. My wife and I probably owe more on our house, more on our business than we have in equity in it. Anybody can see that online as well. Well, then why not just make it clear in your taxes? Why not put them out there? What you got to hide? Nothing to hide. Well, but then why know, are they not online? Because it's not... Else? There are a lot of people in the Senate who put their taxes online. In fact, I have the biggest anti-corruption bill 
proposed right now that we've had since Watergate. And a big part of it is to end lobbying as we know it and to demand more transparency from our elected officials. Everybody has to put their taxes online. Everybody has to divest themselves of businesses. So you never have to doubt. Is Donald Trump working for himself or is he working for the American people? Don't have to doubt that about any public official. No public official would be permitted to have individual stocks that they trade in while they're out making decisions that affect the value of those stocks. Corruption is a serious problem. It is a serious Washington. problem. It is a problem on Beacon Hill as well. In fact, I filed legislation which was adopted just this last year to stop payouts for sexual harassment on Beacon Hill. We want to make sure that, first of all, lawmakers are held accountable if they conduct themselves in the wrong way, not the taxpayers. Secondly, it'd be good to deter that as well. You know, you talk about lobbyists, by the way. You know, I think when you were at the CFPB setting it up, you actually hired, went against President Obama's rule on banning lobbyists and you hired a banking lobbyist to work at the CFPB. I don't know who you're talking about. But Put that out there then. Fine. But, but let me be clear. You're introducing legislation in the state legislature. Does your anti-corruption legislation say people should post their taxes and uh, not trade in individual stocks when they can make decisions in the legislature that will affect the value of those stocks? Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. To end lobbying as we know it. Go ahead. Yeah, actually, I, I would like to have a, a, a moratorium on lobbying as well. I think there should not be the revolving door Me when too. somebody serves in office and then goes immediately to work for will a lobbyist. You support and my I have bill a. For that? Let, well, let, you should let support my play. bill as Good. well because I have the same uh, restrictions on lobbying coming right out of uh, the Senate as well. Uh, look, I think that. Um, Corruption on Beacon Hill is something that I've been fighting as well. I wanted to make sure that our Speaker of the House was not Speaker for Life. I tried to implement term limits, uh, which was overridden because it's a supermajority of Democrats in the House. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like there should be more accountability uh, by legislators on Beacon Hill. And when I go to Washington, as a senator, I will continue that work of making sure there's transparency and ending the corruption. Transparency. So. You're saying after you get elected, you'll reveal your taxes? Senator Warren, I, the fascination with my taxes is amazing no, because I it's just something wondered. that. It's I'm, something that uh, I put mine out there. I, yeah, clearly, I mean, you want to run for president. No, That's one of those things that you do to tick off the box and make sure that you know everybody knows I'm running. You know, I'm going to take a hard look. You are running for president. Everybody knows now at this point. It's it's a, not a secret at all. You've got staffers that you've moved to New Hampshire to go work up there for the Democratic Party. You've moved staffers to all the swing states. And again, you've been traveling so extensively around the country that I, I wonder if sometimes you know where the Massachusetts uh, zip code is. Look. I'm, I'm clear on Massachusetts and work hard here in Massachusetts and have produced for Massachusetts. Should we talk about that for a Go minute? ahead. So one of the things I did, I promised when I stood here six years ago, is that I would work on education, on infrastructure, on basic research. Right here in Massachusetts, 4,500 young people got all of their student loan debt forgiven because of work that I did. I managed to get nearly three quarters of a billion dollars for student loan forgiveness for police officers, firefighters, teachers, people who can stay in public service. On infrastructure, I've helped bring in money for everything from dredging Boston Harbor to the Seven Bridges in Lowell to the green line, to the seawalls and situate, to a hundred, more than a hundred million dollars for our firefighters in grants all across this commonwealth. And last year when Donald Trump wanted to cut the budget for the National Institutes of Health, which would hurt us disproportionately, I managed to round up enough senators that in fact we got it expanded by two okay. billion dollars. Equal time. So it's pretty amazing that you're touting the National Institute of Health when you were the sole vote, sole vote from Massachusetts in the congressional delegation against a bill called the 21st Century Cures Act. Mm -hmm. Now this bill, for people who don't know, is, was something that passed under President Obama and it had Vice President Joe Biden's cancer moonshot funding in it. This bill has given Massachusetts millions of dollars last year to fight the opioid crisis. This bill provides jobs in Massachusetts because we lead with research hospitals. This bill's goal was to end terminal illnesses like cancer, like Alzheimer's. You were the sole vote against the 21st Century Cures Act. So look, I wanted to vote for that bill. I worked on that bill for over two years and at the last minute, a bunch of giveaways to drug companies were stuffed in. 
My view is the people of Massachusetts didn't send me to Washington to work for big drug companies. They sent me to work for the people of Massachusetts. And the people of Massachusetts and need health care uh, solutions yeah, like ending cancer. Do like, you want like, to be the last vote to repeal not at all. Healthcare. Not at all. Let, let him go ahead, finish out. We're going to take a break, but go ahead and take a few seconds here. Right. And this bill, despite the fact that pharmaceutical companies are actually being given funds to try to end c cancer, you voted against. Okay, now, yes, pharmaceutical companies need to be held accountable for their pricing, but at the same time, when our country was experiencing polio, did we say, you know what, some pharmaceutical companies are going to make too much money. Let's end this disease. Let's cure this now. That's the decision that this bill was trying to do. No. End a disease. Cancer moonshot funding, I think, was a vital part of this. Briefly. Back and so, forth one more time. I want to be key on this. This is once again what it means to have Donald Trump's back and the, the backs of the big drug This is companies. about Massachusetts, let, it's not let about let the me president. Finish my point now. I didn't interrupt you. <laughs> because my point on this one is Donald Trump, the guy you said uh, I'll have his back 100% of the time, put out his first budget and said we will cut the National Institutes of Health budget by one. $1.5 billion. I rounded up the senators to draw a line in the sand and say no, that will not happen. And we got an increase, the budget increased by $2 billion. That's a real difference. You didn't speak out on this. I'm the one that made it happen. And a final word to you before we break. Go ahead. You know, on Beacon Hill, I've been proud to support legislation that increases uh, health care funding for Massachusetts. In fact, I think what we need to do, I know we're about to take a break, so this is a probably bigger topic, but I think what we need to do for health care in general is go back to a state solution that worked for Massachusetts. We had 100% of our children covered, 98% of adults under the Massachusetts health care plan. We need to go back to a system that works for Massachusetts. I'm not trying to run for president of the United States like you are and, and try to institute a, a fully government-run health care system that's completely unaffordable. I'm trying to work to make sure people in Massachusetts are taken care of and their health. All right. Thank you. We're going to pause here. This is a good debate, and we'll continue with it after a short break and turn to a fresh topic as the WBZ Senate debate continues in a moment. Stay with us. Back to the WBZ Senate debate candidates. He's done a good job touching on a number of different topics here. But I want to bring in a viewer question that was submitted to us that touches on a, a state issue with broad, broad ramifications. Uh, this comes from Caddy in Billerica, who points out that on November 6, voters will be asked if they want to repeal a state law that requires any establishment with separate areas for men and women, such as restrooms to allow access for people, quoting the ballot question now, consistent with their gender identity, end quote. A no vote ends that legal requirement. A yes vote keeps it. Our viewer wants to know, how will you vote? You'll go first here, Representative. Sure. So we have anti-discrimination laws in Massachusetts that cover this, and I felt when we debated this in the legislature that uh, there was already protections in place. I want protections in place that cover everybody from Massachusetts, and this law, in my opinion, creates a loophole that creates a situation where someone, a sexual predator potentially, could come into an inappropriate area and potentially uh, cause a problem for underage people that would be inappropriate and if you question that person, if I were in there, for example, with my daughters, and somebody were to question or, or ask somebody when they came out of the restroom what was going on, I could be subject to fine or even jail time. I felt that the protections in the law, anti-discrimination protections were already in place, and that this does not protect a certain portion of our community. Thank you. Senator Warren. I will vote yes on three to continue to protect people against discrimination. and. I think it's really disgusting not to. Uh, not only does Mr. Deal have Donald Trump's back 100% of the time, evidently he has Vice President Pence's back 100% of the time. You know, Vice President Pence has pretty much made his name on discriminating against our LGBTQ community and stirring up hate whenever possible. This is about a provision that says, let's roll back and say here in Massachusetts, somehow it's okay 
to discriminate against one segment of our people because of their gender identity? No, that is not who we are in Massachusetts. Rebuttal. We are not discriminating against anyone when you try to protect. We have discrimination laws already in place. You know, try to protect. There is absolutely no evidence that people who are transgender pose any threat to anyone any more than anybody you know else we actually agree population. with this we actually agree on well, this then however why would you want however legally this to permit people to discriminate this law provides a loophole people. this law provides a loophole that someone who is a sexual predator could go into a space a locker room and claim that day they identify in a different way and then disrobe in front of somebody of the opposite sex no. that is what this law does this, it's not about discrimination okay. it is, is about a loophole that could be exploited this is the kind of ugly, ugly smears that tries to say there's a vulnerable group, let's keep them separate, and let's make up stories about the kind of threats they pose. This is just wrong. It's ugly and it's wrong. It's what Donald Trump does, it's what Vice President Pence does, and this is what the person who wants to be the next senator from Massachusetts does. No. Anything further? I'll move on. You know, I think Senator Warren, again, continues to talk about Donald Trump and Vice President Pence because this is what she's all about, making sure that everybody knows she wants to go to the White House. She doesn't care about your house. She cares about the White House. That's what Senator Warren keeps trying to hammer home. Brief response. He, he referenced you directly. This is just ugly. Donald Trump is ugly on this topic. The vice president is ugly on this topic, and Jeff Deal is ugly on this topic. I'll give you 10 seconds or so if you want. You know, the president has made it clear that he supports the LGBTQ community as, so, as well as I do. This is a law that has a flaw in it, and that's why I'm against it. All right, I do want to move on, and, and let's stay on the subject of the law. Um, you'll start first here, Senator. Rachel Rollins, the Democratic nominee for Suffolk County District Attorney, has stirred up some controversy by listing a series of crimes, including shoplifting, malicious destruction of property, and drug possession with intent to distribute, that she would not prosecute as DA, seeking instead, by her account, to st save money and ease the court system logjam by, quote, diverting those cases to services to get them help or some sort of restitution, end quote. Our viewer Patrick wrote in to ask, is she right or wrong? Ms. Warren, one minute. So I think that what she's trying to do is to say, let's get realistic about how these low-level crimes are actually used, how they are used to try to manage people, and how, in some cases, they actually just make poverty a crime. People who can't afford, for example, to be able to post bail and therefore end up incarcerated over what are offenses that most of the time would just be thrown out. So I want to say this. I don't know if she has the details right yet. I think she's still working on it. But I think she's doing the right thing. She's trying to ask the right questions about our criminal justice system. She's asking what makes us safer and what makes communities work better. And I support her in those efforts. You know, um, uh, we have drug courts now, for example, here in Massachusetts. And that means we've taken people who legally have offended, who have broken the law, and said, we're going to divert them and we're going to put them somewhere else. Better for that person and better for the community. Thank you. Representative Deal, one minute. You know, in Massachusetts, we've actually passed some uh, legislation, criminal justice reform this last session uh, that I was in support of. That does try to decriminalize certain drug offenses. We do have the drug courts. We have veteran courts mm -hmm. for people who may have committed but shouldn't become an, go from an amateur criminal to a professional criminal. And I understand what uh, uh, Rachel Rollins is, is talking about to an extent. However, the fact that she includes things like evading the police officers as something uh, that she thinks should be decriminalized is wrong. And I'm glad we're talking about the criminal justice system because Senator Warren very famously in Louisiana said just about a month or so ago that it's the criminal justice system that is racist from front to back. I'm wearing a pin tonight from the Boston Patrolmen's Association, the union that has endorsed me, has never endorsed a Republican for the U.S. Senate in their history because they understand that I have the support of them. And Elizabeth Warren has made it clear that she has a disrespect for law enforcement that goes to the point where she actually wants to get rid of ICE, Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, the people that work in partnership 
with Boston police and police unions across the state who have also endorsed me. And it's gone so far with her rhetoric to actually have encouraged a Cambridge supporter of hers to put a $500 bounty on killing an ICE officer. That's how far it goes. Rebuttal. So we have many dedicated, many dedicated public servants in law enforcement, in the court system, uh, all the way through. Law enforcement does heroic work, and I have supported them and supported them strongly. But there is a problem in the criminal justice system right now, and it is a problem based on race. Study after study after study shows that African Americans compared with whites are more likely to be arrested, more likely to be prosecuted, more likely to be wrongfully convicted, and more likely to be given longer sentences. That is a problem in the system, and we need to deal with that problem. And the only way we're going to deal with it is to have a hard conversation about what's going on. So I wish you'd spend more time in Massachusetts to see that we have the lowest incarceration rate in the country next to Vermont, we are solving the problem of trying to decriminalize and keep uh, people of all races out of jail. And I think it's working here in Massachusetts. We have a problem that starts actually with the United States Congress in terms of what it is at the federal government level that we make illegal. And much of that uh, uh, is something that we need to address directly. Look. You want to talk about safety of police officers? I have just worked with the parents of slain police officer Sean Gannon. He was gunned down. And his mom and dad, Denise and Patrick, worked with me on how it is that we can get guns off our street. Weapons of war do not belong on our street. We've worked together on better gun safety. And it's something that would help our police officers and everyone else. But you're endorsed by the NRA, and you don't embrace any of those changes that we need to make our country safer on guns. With all the, extra time, go ahead and with all the law enforcement agencies that support me, I think they know that my stand on the NRA is that lawful gun owners are not the problem. The problem is we have people coming into our country that have brought in drugs, that are trafficking drugs. I went on a gang unit ride-along in the city of Brockton, where I would talk to the officers there who put their lives on the line every single day to try to get these drugs off the streets. They go into a house, they get into a car with someone with guns, with heroin, and they are trying to get those drugs off the streets. Then we have a state senate that's trying to promote sanctuary status that would basically allow these people here illegally with guns, with drugs, to stay in our country. And you promote open borders, you promote sanctuary status, and you want to get rid of ICE, the agency that identifies and deports those people. You're undercutting law enforcement. I was just in Weymouth this morning where Officer Chesna, who was murdered by someone who disarmed him with a rock, took his gun and killed him. With a rock, these law enforcement officers right now feel like if they use the force available to protect themselves or citizens around them, they'll be the ones on trial and not the criminals they're going after, the criminals they're allowed into this country through your policy. So let's move to immigration. But before we do, I just want to be clear. You are endorsed by the NRA, and one of the things that would help make our police officers safer and everyone else in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in this country are to put in some sensible gun reforms that are supported by the overwhelming majority of people here in Massachusetts. But you don't do that because the NRA says no. But let's talk well, about Well, welcome to Massachusetts, where we, wanted, we actually have gun laws that have Let, been effective. One at a time. Uh, well, if you Go want ahead. to talk about gun laws being effective, that's the problem nationally. But that, we're here in Massachusetts. No, it's working. And there's a bill called National Reciprocity put, that would allow us to... can't hear you, can't understand either one of you. You cannot... Briefly put, and then let him respond. You can't build fences around Massachusetts. Someone can buy a gun across the border. They can go down to a gun show in Virginia. They can cross one of our northern borders and buy guns and bring them back into Massachusetts. Yes, our stronger laws keep us safer than other states, but not nearly as safe as we could be if the National Rifle Association didn't hold Congress uh, hostage. Equal time. So there's a bill called National Reciprocity. It's made its way through the House. It, it's going to the Senate. That bill will create a uniform gun owner's license for the United States, much like your driver's license allows you to travel from one state to another. Massachusetts, the common sense gun laws that we have, some of them should be used, in my opinion, to take out the loophole of states like Indiana and states where you have straw buyers that are able to then get those guns into the hands of, of gangs. So right now, we have tried And so to would pass. you support national reciprocity? What I'm supporting at the federal level 
are just any sensible gun reforms. But right I'll now, put the, you national, down as yes. the National Rifle Association holds Congress hostage and will not permit a vote to come to the floor. You know, I was in the Senate a couple of years ago when we just tried to get one, just one vote. And that is, if you're a terrorist on the watch list, you shouldn't be able to buy a gun. And I figured that one, no buy, no fly, right? That ought to be right. And in fact, the Republicans said you can't even have a vote on it. Why? Because the NRA doesn't have it, have, like it. I want to make sure we get back to immigration. Well, yeah, we'll go ahead. Let him okay. respond to what you go said, ahead. and then we will. You know, speaking of watch lists and terrorists, you were against a travel ban that was basically going to try to let us refigure uh, how we let people into our country. Now, in Massachusetts, the Zernaya brothers claimed refugee status. They were in state housing, and they were flying back and forth to Chechnya, a country where they were being radicalized, and then ultimately committed an atrocious murder of four of our citizens and in the marathon bombing. And yet you were against a travel ban that was just going to basically take a temporary hold on six countries that were known under the President Obama's administration, known states of terror, where we did not want to have people coming in like the Zernaya brothers and committing those atrocities. But you were against even just trying to fix that with the travel ban. Yeah, right. I was totally opposed to a Muslim travel ban. I believe There's 50 it, Muslim I countries, believe, six countries that were known I for believe terror. It was unconstitutional. This started as a Muslim, tra as a Muslim ban. And we know what this was all about, and we know where you stand on it. You joined a rally organized by the largest anti-Muslim hate group in America. And that's not who we are as a country. Immigration makes us stronger. This is how we build a future. I voted for comprehensive immigration reform in 2013, and basically what it was about is it was about dreamers, it was about a path to citizenship, and it was about stronger borders. Who blocked it? It was bipartisan. But then a group of Republicans said, no, we can't go forward on that. Well, you made a reference to him participating in a rally I think he wants to respond to. But then I'd like you both to take the few minutes we have till the break to talk about what, you're gonna, what your top priority is going to be in the Senate in the new session to fix our immigration system. Go ahead, Representative. I am not sure what she's talking about as far as a rally with... It was a rally in Bern, ordered, uh, 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 by... Uh, Act for America, a group that the Southern Poverty Law Center designated as a hate group and described as the largest anti-Muslim group in America. It was on April 22nd of this year, and you okay. we were there. Let's hear the response. I don't know what she's talking about, because we'll have to clear that up later. But uh, So what will you do? What will either one of you do in the new session? What's your top priority to repair our immigration system? Go ahead. Well, you know, I actually have a track record in Massachusetts of trying to fix immigration. You know, I filed language that would try to speed up the process by which people can become citizens. I am all for people coming to America to live the American dream. You know, when I was on the Ways and Means Committee for four years here in Massachusetts, I heard the same testimony from the Department of Immigration and Refugees over and over and over again, that we have el potentially 300,000 people that are eligible for naturalization, but we can only process, because of the federal and state budget, about 1,500 people a year. That is wrong. That is the artificial bottleneck that is keeping people from becoming immigrants. I am totally for immigration. However, we need to make sure we have secure borders and that people follow the laws to come to our country the right way. Go ahead, Senator. So, I went down to the borders. I saw cages, cages of children. I saw cages with just little girls in them. And I talked to mothers whose children had been taken away from them. You know, if ICE can't tell the difference in the threat posed by a nine-year-old girl and a terrorist and a criminal, then yes, it needs to be reformed. That's the problem we've got right now. We need to do two things with our immigration system. We need to make sure that it preserves our security and that it is consistent with our values. Immigration has made our nation stronger. We have an immigration plan. I voted for it in 2013. It was bipartisan. It strengthened border security. But what it did not do is spend resources taking children away from their mothers. It did not spend resources right here in Massachusetts taking people away who show up to testify against okay. criminals.
Okay, candidates, I'd like to get our final break out of the way, and then we'll just pick up this topic. I'm assuming you both have more to say on it, and that's exactly what we're going to do when the WBZ Senate debate continues in a moment. Please stay with us. Welcome back to the WBC Senate debate. When we took our break, the candidates were discussing immigration reform. Representative Deal, it was your turn. Continue. Well, I think the senator was mistaking Border Patrol for Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Border Patrol is doing the job at the border to try to make sure that uh, people coming across are um, processed, whether as refugees or processed to be returned to their country and not ICE. I don't know if you've met with anybody from ICE ever. Um, I actually have the endorsement of the New England ICE Union because they understand I've been listening to them and they are understaffed. They are undersourced right now in trying to do their job. They're literally at siege in Portland right now uh, with their offices. Uh, and again, Border Patrol is trying to do their job, but when we have a border that is porous, I've been to the border. I actually went to Fort Hancock, a mile uh, east of, of uh, El Paso, and I was shown exactly where the fence that's been built currently. There was a bipartisan uh, support for a border fence that was started. The funding stopped, and there's sections where it's completely stopped. Uh, and where that fence ends, you can see the tracks of where people are coming across either bringing drugs, human trafficking, or unfortunately taking the risk of bringing families across. Now, you know, I don't want people bringing their families across the border in dangerous situations. I want them to immigrate into our country legally. When we have the temptation of an open border, that's when these things happen. If we secure that border, then we make sure that the laws are followed and that people aren't put at risk. Go ahead, Senator. No one supports an open border. And in 2013, I voted for bipartisan legislation that would strengthen our border security. I think that is a sensible thing to do. But it was a compromise. And part of the compromise is that it said that our dreamers would have a path to citizenship, that people who are here who are not documented will have a path to citizenship, that people who are here on temporary protected status will have a path to citizenship, that we will clean up the mess around our visas and make them work, work for people, work for families, work for this economy. It's a sensible approach. And we have reentered Introduced it, we have pushed for it, and repeatedly the Republicans have blocked it. And Donald Trump, after waltzing everybody near a deal last year, walked away from it. Look, what we need is we need an immigration system that works, and that means it has two parts to it. It, it is about our security, but it is also about our values. And when ICE, right here in Massachusetts, goes after people who show up to testify at a trial, when they threaten people so that they won't report crimes, when women are afraid to report domestic abuse because they're afraid someone in their family or one of their neighbors will be picked up by ICE, that doesn't make anybody any safer. Response, what please. we need is a system that makes us safer but that is consistent with our values. Go ahead. You know what ICE in Massachusetts has done is they have taken 49 members of MS-13 in Lawrence off the streets who had enough fentanyl to kill half the population of Massachusetts. About a year ago, we prosecuted about 61 members of MS-13 gang in Boston. Somebody was killed just a few months ago on an East Boston beach. That person was apprehended by ICE, and that's what we need to do. Allow them to do the job of identifying those criminals who are here illegally and committing crimes. They're the ones that are keeping our streets safe, but you want to get rid of that agency wholesale. Briefly, well, and then I want to move on. Go I ahead. I want to see this agency reformed, because an agency that can't tell the difference in the risk between a seven-year-old girl, between a woman going in for brain cancer surgery, and a terrorist or a criminal is an agency that is not working it is not making us safer, and it sure doesn't reflect our values. I'd like to move on and squeeze in one last question sure. before our debate concludes, and you'll go first here, Senator. It's been 13 years since the last time Congress voted on a money-saving military base realignment and closure round, and pressure has been building for another round of it. The late Senator John McCain was calling for one before he passed away. Do you support or oppose a review of what we're doing with our defense dollars, even if it meant Massachusetts jobs might be at risk? One minute, please. So, yes, uh, I am now on the Senate Armed Services Committee, 
And one of the things that I have asked for on the Armed Services Committee repeatedly is that we actually do an assessment of the budget. You know, that it's, it's an amazing thing that throughout the rest of the budget, we actually do the accounting to see if all the numbers add up, if everything is accurate. And yet with the military budget, we don't do this. So half of our discretionary budget is basically right now unaudited and only the other half of the budget is audited. I have pressed hard for this. I have, I have worked on legislation on this. And so far, the Department of Defense has resisted and still not met their legal obligations for an audit of the Defense Department budget. Thank you. Representative Deal, one minute. I think any agency, state agency, is certainly due for audits and making sure that we're spending our money correctly. When I led the ballot question in 2014 to stop the gas tax from going up automatically every year without a vote, people said we needed the transportation money or else the bridges and roads would crumble. Our bridges and roads are being fixed right now. The fact was we weren't spending the money in the right places. And so we proved that the money was being wasted. We do need to make sure we look at those uh, agencies like the Department of Defense. However, we also have in Massachusetts, Fort Devens, you know, partially open now, partially commercialized. Weymouth Naval Air Station is gone. It is now being developed uh, privately. We have Otis, we have Westover, we have Westfield uh, air bases. We need to make sure we retain our military uh, bases that we have. And also, I believe there was a, potentially going to be an Army uh, installation in Boston we weren't able to secure with Senator Warren on the committee. Now, this is uh, unfortunately something where I think with her trying to basically go against the president at every turn, she's never going to have a seat at the table in Washington that I can provide. And in fact, when you talk about military and you talk about veterans, this is also the same senator that took 113 days to respond to a veteran from Lowell who had been contacting her office. Response. So one of the things we do very well here in Massachusetts is that we have a lot of research. And I have been a strong proponent on the Armed Services Committee for making sure that those research dollars go to our facilities here. For example, I was able to get a whole new building for Lincoln Labs. It's going to be really important for the region, uh, for the work that's done in Framingham, uh, for the work that's done at Hanscom to make sure that the base is up to uh, standards where it can handle uh, more aircraft and the like. This is important. But what was also, is also important to me sitting on armed services is the people. All three of my brothers were veterans, and I take very seriously my responsibility to veterans. I answer questions. My office got back to the group that you're talking about that did an open letter, and I got back to them ultimately personally. But here's the deal. When we're talking about our veterans, this is another problem we've got in who government works for. It works great for the giant contractors. It's not working for our service members. So one of the things I was able to get through is that our National Guard, which once their uh, promotions are approved, we're taking long, long periods in Washington, months before the approval actually mm -hmm. came through. So they had to do the work, even though they weren't getting the pay and they weren't getting the promotion in their jacket. Okay. I heard that from our people okay. here on the ground, and I got the law changed on that. And so our National Guard here in Massachusetts and all across the country is going to have more money, more promotions, faster. About a minute left, and you get it. Sure. My grandfathers were both uh, Army veterans. My uncle, Vietnam Army veteran. I certainly respect the military, and I certainly want to make sure that the soldiers that have served our country, put their lives on the line, have the resources they need uh, after they've put everything out there for us. Chelsea Soldier Home in Massachusetts has Civil War era construction. Mm -hmm. We need to update and help our health care system for our veterans. There's not as many women practitioners serving in the VAs with more women serving in the military. I want to make sure we take care of them as well. And so having uh, me down there with a seat at the table in Washington that Senator Warren won't have basically being the main obstructionist uh, in the Senate against the White House is going to be a big difference in what I can deliver. Well, I, that just leaves us wanting to see the next two debates. Candidates, that's all our time. Thank you both very much for being here. And that concludes this evening's debate. A quick reminder before we leave, Election Day is Tuesday, November 6th.
Please get out and cast your vote. Then watch it count on our election night coverage here on WBZ TV and TV 38. A final thank you to the candidates. Thanks to all the hardworking people at WBZ who made this possible. And thank you for watching.